Hero, can we uh, shut this? Uh, huh? Hi, morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. I was just trying to see that video that you sent, and then I thought I'd look at it later because now <laughs> I just went through it. <laughs> Nice one. So I I recently uh, downloaded this Google uh, app, uh -huh. and uh, it's very nice. Huh? So I use it for um, what's it called? Google Lens. So okay. We, when we'd gone to Goa, I think someone mentioned that with Google Lens you can click a picture of anything and ask it to search an image. Uh -huh. So it just matches a few things from the image and finds out something and throws answers at you. And then you have to figure out which one is the appropriate answer. So it works very well for plants, flowers, uh, and yeah. birds. And uh, <laughs> then now that the app is there, what was it that they suggested? There were some uh, articles that they'd suggest. Mm. Like... Um, Sometimes when you, YouTube gives you suggestions, similarly, Google also yeah. gives you suggestions. And this, this came up in, in oh. that one of the articles. So I think they're throwing these things at me to figure out what I would like and then how they can grab my attention. Like to do, yeah. <laughs> but I don't get time to read. So if there are pictures, then I can see it. It's so and bad. sometimes it's... Uh... Or yeah. Sometimes it's quite freaky because you're thinking of something and then it just shows up on your screen. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, what is happening? That I'm convinced that the phones and all are listening. Yeah. And, and in a way, really? it's good it's like... because you don't have to waste time before. I mean, while you're having a conversation with your friends, they listen in and then they give you some suggestions. I'm pretty okay with that. I'm. I don't have anything to hide to have to fear my privacy or anything. I mean, please, if I'm going to uh, plan a trip to Europe or something, feel free to send me cheap tickets or whatever. It's a question. I'll be very happy. <laughs> Save me some time. <laughs> I think in the future these search engines are going to become like your closest friend or uh, your confidant and your boyfriend or husband or something like that and they'll be so good at knowing what you want because their algorithms will be so perfect that then relationships but there's a danger that they may tell you what you want rather than you realizing what you want which is also fine. I don't know where this idea of free will comes from. But then in. you won't think for yourself, no? We, anyway, we don't. But have you realized <laughs> we don't think any case? We we, we so oh, easily are swayed one way or another. This whole clinging on to free will is such a myth. We don't mm -hmm. have, we, we have not decided on our habits by ourselves. They are all influenced. We've been always told what, what is expected, what is right, what uh, is wrong. And we have 
trained herself into it. None of us has been allowed to live in a jungle and decide for yourself what your ethics are going to be, what your choices are going to be. So, I don't know why people say free will, free will. <laughs> and if they give you the better lot, uh, something that is good enough, I, how many times do you actually research to the 50th page on Google to get an answer no. that you want? We don't do that in any case. So as is the first page, whoever comes, we, we always buy them and uh, it's done. <laughs> so as, as you're mentioning, Aditi, ma'am, you know, it's the same like we have in our office, like the, the teams which we use and the outlook which we use, they have now started giving us the reply. I mean, if someone has given me an uh, a message, what should I reply? Like a generic message so that I don't have to think. I just click on that message and it's gone. And more often than not, it is what you would have said in any case. So yeah. they're, they're developing yes. softwares intuitive, right? So they, the software is going to say, okay, so I'm okay with that. Or even Google does that no? on Gmail. Yeah. It often gives you a suggestion. Um, uh, yes, go ahead or I'll get back to you or something like that is always there. And I've, I've investigated this with myself at least. Would I say anything else? I have often reworded the message to say, okay, this is a good suggestion, but I'll write it in my own words. But <laughs> that's because I have the time. If you, uh, yeah. if this comes up and you say, okay, good enough, it can go, it'll go. Yeah. No, I'm just trying very exactly. hard to, to be embracing of technology because it is going to come and take over. So you should enjoy the technology for the technology bit and spend all the time that you save from that in doing handmade crafts. Then do yes. calligraphy, <laughs> origami, embroidery, anything that technology can't handle for you, you do it. So you enjoy the best of both worlds, analog and digital. And you don't have to feel frustrated. You don't need to even reword anything now. You just use a chat GPT and you use it to Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's the new monster. We are going to become a dumb race. And that's sad. As if we aren't. Uh, only a few intelligent people. Mm. Okay. So, it's not happening today. Today, we are going to uh, sketch materials. So, I want to focus on metallic objects today. Because... Uh, they are a very dramatic subject for pencil sketching. I have also put in two ceramic uh, vases, which uh, have been placed so that we can see the contrast between met metal and uh, ceramic. So whenever you come across uh, any kind of image like that, or if you want to do pencil sketching, how do you how do you study the material or medium? And this goes for any kind of study, not just pencil. But there are ways in which you can try and understand what the subject is all about by asking questions, not necessarily only the questions for which the answers are obvious. So like if I were to pose the question, what is the difference between this image and this image or say this one, it's slightly bigger. So it should make you think about things other than the fact that one is a vase and one is a teapot, right? So in terms of just the range of grays in this one versus the range of grays in this one, the highlight or the nature of highlight What is the darkest shade in this? What is the darkest shade over here? What else can you see? So I, I'm not going to give you the answers, but I'm going to give you a few questions with which you can start investigating for yourselves what, uh, what the subject means. One second. Daisies. 
Okay. So different mediums will have a different reaction to light. And that is what we are trying to study. Since we are converting all, all the shapes and all the shades into just grays, it helps to work with all white items or metallic items. But with metal, there is also the danger of reflection. So when you're looking for images, look for stuff which has neutral reflections. More often than not, you will have the reflection of the person who is clicking the picture <laughs> that comes as a distorted figure somewhere in these shapes. And it can be fun to try and uh, recreate that as well. Now here there are two spheres which are metallic. Both of them seem to, at least the first one, seems to look like it has been digitally drawn. So this would be a sphere uh, in a digital software which has been attributed the quality of maybe silver or chrome or steel as a surface texture and with adequate light around it in the atmosphere around it so that we can get a certain reflection. This one on the other hand seems to be a real um, a real sphere of which a photograph has been taken because there are scratches on it and trying to recreate these kind of scratches on surfaces is uh, very painful. So I'm just assuming that this is a real sphere. So we're going to start off like a warm-up 10-15 minute exercise with uh, this sphere. I'm going to demonstrate how we'll do it. And then we can begin. Yes, Daisy. Lunch. Okay, so it goes without saying that this entire class today, we are not going to use uh, erasers because there's no point. This is a study. So you want to retain all the lines that you have created like a scaffolding. The size of the illustrations also should not be too large. Just keep them manageable so that you're move, making small movements with your pencil because trying to create shades which are this large will require your hand to move uh, a, in a large area and shading in a large area can be a nightmare. The other thing is also sharpen your pencils to a nice point uh, because we need um, more surface area and um, this will help you draw cleaner lines better. Okay, always start off with a more loose line than we normally do till you get the right shape. Very rarely will you get an accurate circle in one go. So allow yourself to move your hand around a bit and then loosely mark the areas which are highlighted. And then the whole exercise is to notice the various shades of gray. So within each gray shade also, you will find more shades than 
uh, you see right in the beginning. Start off with shading is with uniform pressure, with very light pressure, just barely touching the pencil to paper. And this is going to be, you know, the entire area you can fill up with that sh uh, shade because it's really light. So the entire sphere I'm making, I'm shading at maybe 45 degrees. And then you can change the angle. Maybe make it more upright. And start shading in the darker areas. And always start the darker areas from the center of the dark area, not the edge. And grow that shading towards the outside. Now this time we are not using lines like we done last time. We are, what we're doing is really fine shading. And this is akin to fine art illustration as opposed to contemporary illustration that we did last week. The difference here is that we are focusing on every shape and every shade in detail. So we want to make um, an illustration which is as close to the real image as possible. But of course, again, without erasers, please don't erase. If you feel, so one of two things can happen you feel that your shape is inaccurate, let that be. And you feel that your shading is too dark. If it's too light, you're not going to be worried. You can always darken it. But if it's too dark, you might think that you would want to lighten it a little bit with an eraser. But what I'm going to urge you to do in case that is happening is to redraw. Don't erase. Because... Erasing will remove any evidence that you made a mistake, which means that any learning that you did will be gone forever. And you will never remember it. And this is not like a final project that that erasing is going to really make any difference. It's only for you. Now, if you notice that these two highlights are supposed to be lights and there's a little bit of a glow around them, even in the reflection. So try to maintain that by not darkening too close to those lights, the edge of those lights. And every addition that you do, make it a very soft light addition. So this shading is more organic. I'm not making, uh, as much as I do, the first part I shaded in one direction. Now I'm actually shading in any form that might help me deposit more graphite onto paper. So I, I might just go into an area and just move my pencil about in a random direction so that all corners of that section are covered. The pressure can also change. After the initial um, zero pressure or very light pressure, we can increase it and make it more, uh, much darker.
And the study is of the various grays that you start noticing. There could be as many as 10 different shades in this. The subtle differences between the grays is what we're trying to capture. So I've been using the analogy of test cricket with this. Any of you are um, from cricket families, those obsessed cricketers who watch test matches? Yes, my husband and my father both. <laughs> ah, very good. So you should ask them, what is it that they watch in test matches? Because I did this to a friend. Do you know, Ritika? Do you Do you watch with them? No, but so, I know. Huh. I don't know what, what they what they like about it. No, I have never asked. You should ask. You should ask. So I asked a friend of mine, "Ke uh, um, match is going on for five days, and sometimes even after that, most of these matches are draws. So what is the whole point? And not that I'm much of a cricket watcher, in any case, but there is that josh, no, like." The moment there's IPL, some World Cup or something, that josh is very different. And then suddenly it peters out. And uh, But the real cricket people watch everything. They don't even watch just IPL. Year round, they're watching all the matches. So I asked this friend and he said, it's, it's more about honing the craft. So... The bowler is not bowling for to get the batsman out necessarily. That's just one of the goals. But he is bowling to perfect his bowling action. So I think this is also an, an, uh, an Indian men thing. Have, have you noticed how every boy that I know since childhood, while they're walking... They try to do this bowling action or a batting <laughs> action while they're standing. There's something about <laughs> the game that they feel compelled. Uh, nobody tries to do the catching action, but they do the bowling and they try to spin their arm and all. <laughs> it looks very funny. They don't realize it, I think. <laughs> so that is, that is what test match is all about. You are... It just happens to be that there is somebody in front of you who, who will receive the ball because he is trying to hone his batting skills. How to face any ball possible, how to anticipate where the ball is going to bounce and uh, then respond to it accurately. And uh, just hitting the ball is good enough, apparently. Huh? Scoring <laughs> is just time pass. Ke liye. They don't even have bother about scores. So... At the end of the day, making too many runs is not the aim of the game. It's about how, by the end of the game, the batsmen, uh, the batsmen and the bowlers interacted. That is what they're looking at. I think the equivalent in any other fine, um, I guess, the fine art equivalent in other fields would be everybody... Uh, a lot of people cook, right? But then what's the difference between a cook at home and a chef in a fine dining restaurant? Now, we're not talking about Shiv Sagar here. Huh? So, in a fine dining restaurant, the chef is involved in every tiny detail of the food. So, where the ingredients come from, how they're cooked, and then they'll have hajar very fancy things that um, even if they're not fancy um, they are there is a lot of attention to detail and perfection of everything so that there is a predictable outcome every time it's not a it's not like Bhagwan Baro say ki ticket today it's good tomorrow it's we can't say plus it's not made in bulk it's not a formula everything is fresh so there are a lot of things where it matters how they cook i think as women we can appreciate all of that so with most uh 
most crafts or most activities that fall under uh, expertise when you say somebody is an expert that is what they are able to do they are they know the details they are, have worked on honing their skills in detail so every little minutiae of that particular craft is covered by them and studied by them and they can more or less give you a predictable mm -hmm. outcome so what we are trying to do over here is now focusing on these kinds of details if we are doing pencil sketching how many grays can we make how does our pencil line work are we able to recreate that which we see in a reference image so here this is like a test match you can redraw this very sphere five times or 50 times or can work on this sphere for the entire duration of our class today and that would be a good thing so even if you're satisfied with your first one you can attempt at making another one and another one and another one and every time you make a new one you will notice something different there will be some change that you will create it's near impossible that it's going to be the same every time and sometimes it could be bad also it's not as it will improve i can't guarantee that but it will be different so this this exercise uh if i were to compare to our previous work when we were doing travel or even something like that this was about um, freeing up our hand and trying to see very quickly how we can notice contrast in our subject. But something like this, we made it pretty fast. We, we took quick measurements. I This won't be considered fine art because we just have put some patches of color to indicate the fafda and spent a little time on lettering. But other than that, it's a quick sketch. What else have we done? Okay, now this comes close to fine art illustration because we've spent a lot of time in trying to recreate a lot of the details. So does this. But something like this is definitely not fine art. It's only very sketchy and it's meant to have that. So there is, there is value in both. Here also it's more crafty. This is not really fine art and this is definitely not fine art it's very casual very fun very loose lines so this imagine this quality and then when you see a real picture of this leaf and then you recreate it very slowly that quality this is the difference we're talking about so here we can get away with a lot of illustration that is like this and make it look exciting and engaging but the end uh goal is to develop a certain strength in line and that can happen only if you indulge in uh, this the pencil sketching kind of artwork spend time in understanding the details in recreating realistic looking objects all right now, since it's 10 o'clock, what I want you to do is, can you look for an object around you that we can sketch? So I want to do that first, and then we'll do one of the illustrations or one of the reference images that we've made. Can you look for a metallic object around you that we can illustrate? And even I'm going to take two minutes and go and get it.
Okay, I have this lemon squeezer. So we need to illustrate the object in front of us. That is what I want you to do. So all of us are going to have different objects. So what I want you to do, and again, I forgot this instruction. Um, when you were making the, the sphere also, I wanted, I should have told you that for something like that, you need to sit in a way that you are seeing your reference image and your drawing in the same plane. So I've said this even before, but it's even more valid now because if you keep moving your head up and down, there is certain loss of information. So for this time now, keep your object in front of you in such a way that, and also sit in such a way that you can see the object. Uh, so if you're making it on paper, don't keep it on your book, but keep it like this over here and draw here. So keep the orientation how in whatever way you have kept this object or keep it like this. That's easy for you to draw and then try to recreate it. Now don't draw it the same size if you can help it. Draw it slightly smaller, about two thirds the size because anything bigger than your palm this way or this way is too difficult to shade. Now with metallic objects, there are going to be reflections. So if, there, if you've got wires and things hanging around, use a piece of paper to to just shield the wires so that you don't get too much of disturbance in the reflections or best is keep the object on a white sheet of paper because then immediate reflections are always going to be this would be from the bottom and if it's a glass or something then keep it upright so then the reflections from the periphery don't disturb your object Anyway, you're not going to see too much of the back of the object. So you need to keep the white closer to the front. Any questions so far? Any comments? Ma'am, I wanted to ask some questions. Yes. Whenever I try to like draw the sphere, hmm? it always comes out like this. So am I doing something wrong? Yeah, let uh, me see. Regarding the strokes. Hmm. Right. So um what you what you can change is when you're shading. Firstly, I think your size is a little large, so reduce the size. Then it becomes a little more manageable. And uh, when you're shading, we have been doing this line shading, right? But what I want you to do this for this uh, particular one, remember, we did, have we done this? We, we did this in last class, right? We just did this kind of shading. Yeah. This is the kind of shading we want, where we do not want the lines to be seen. So it's all very smooth. You try to not leave any gaps between each pencil line that you make. And then um, very lightly also mark the area where you think you have dark shadows, medium shadows, even around the highlight. And then layer it one upon the other. Okay, so that's what I want you to see. Once you start layering it, then you'll start getting some shape. But in the beginning, also what happens is that between the shades, you will get a very sharp line, which is also fine. Get the sharp line, we will we can work with that. But right now, what you have created almost looks like in one shot, you started painting something very dark. In, some, in one shot, you started painting something medium. That shouldn't be the case. It should be very light then built up one on top of the other, slowly, slowly. And then you're sure that in some place it's going to be really dark. Then you increase the pressure, but not so much that you have to press the pencil down. It's a gentle pressure. So the difference is between uh, poking a needle and then scratching versus pressing your palm and massaging that graphite onto paper. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll try for okay. again. Uh, do you I do you want to do object drawing or do you want to try the sphere one more time? I will do the object drawing. All right, okay. Okay. Now there are several challenges over here that you need to recognize. Drawing an object from real life onto paper means converting a three-dimensional object into two dimensions. And that itself is 50% of the problem. Once you can do that, then everything else is easy. So take your time in observing the object and creating shapes that will help you draw the object. So now my object is kept in front of me. Oh, here it is. So I'm going to be watching the object and the illustration like this. So it's better that I hold my paper flat. If your object is upright, then it's best if you hold your book upright, sit back in your chair and observe the object in front and your book over here. Okay? Right. Now, or the first lines are usually wrong. So you want to create what I like to call a scaffolding drawing. This, this is a rough sketch. And for each line that you draw, all you have to figure out is the size, size of the line, the direction, angles, whether it is curved or straight, so nature. And those will help you, like I'm drawing this part of the object. So all I have to do is figure out what is the distance between the circle that I've drawn, in what angle do I have to take it? So I have to take it at about um, at the 10 o'clock direction and then draw a curve at about 45 degrees, maybe 50 degrees and then pull it down. So it's all about breaking down each part of that object into just a line and then giving that line some definition and that should be it. Everything you draw can be redrawn or can be drawn with respect to what you've drawn before. So if this is the size of my, uh, of this depression here, the dimple, how much is this? Maybe about so big. It's about three quarters as far away. And after making the first few shapes, you will be able to convert everything into a proportionate size. So that's the next one. And then it's just a matter of faithfully drawing what you see. Measure everything based on the previous thing that you have drawn. So if this is the circle, use I'm using my pencil to figure this out. If this is the circle, how many times is the handle? One, two. So two times the length of this circle is the handle. And I can apply the same thing here. I've already drawn the circle. So I do one. Two, and this is where my handle will end. So 
So this is a ballpark measurement, and that is pretty good to begin with. You can get a lot done without actually measuring this. Now, when you have to draw long span lines, try to not rotate the book and draw this because you might, you will definitely change the angle. So draw short lines. They're easier to draw even if the direction is unfamiliar. And then when you start shading, shade very light first. Don't do any dark shading in the first go at all. So when you are doing this exercise, what your brain is actually doing is getting trained to see two of the same thing. It's being trained. It already knows how to see a real object, but it does not know objective observation. So it has made up its mind in a way about what this object is and how, what its identity is. But when only when you start illustrating it in pencil or in detail, do some things become apparent And uh, some questions are raised. Like I see certain shapes on the inside, which you guys probably won't see. And I don't know what they are, but they're there and they are a certain darkness in value. So I'm just going to have to re recreate them. And you might see your reflection also. I can see my reflection on this, on the inside. Are you all able to do this? I'd be very surprised if there are no questions and no doubts, no frustration. I mean, pleasantly, but still. Mine is going well. You're doing okay? Okay, good. Okay, also remember to keep a sheet of paper handy as a guard sheet. As your sketching becomes uh, comes out into a larger area, you will need something to protect uh, the sketch. Otherwise, you'll start smudging.
also when you are shading uh, aim to shade as best as you can okay uh, because the more you do it the more stuff you start seeing and then you start at some point you could start doubting yourself Kerry, i've not done this or my proportion has gone a little off so those things are part of the game in the beginning but don't let that discourage you and keep moving forward Aditi ma'am, when I was in Shimla, huh. so uh, uh, there there was a theater, like the old theater with the British people used to go. So yeah. they have maintained yeah. it till now. And pe they have put the pictures of, you know, all the old Shimla uh, uh, matlab, heritage buildings which were built by British. Huh. And they're so beautiful. And all the sketches were the pencil sketches. Really? So some, yeah. I will share oh. with you the picture. I took the picture of, uh, you know, the sketch. Uh, uh, that person allowed me so basically those were all only pencil drawn uh, sketches all pencil drawn i was just amazed on you know the way he just drew each and every like a break or or you know the uh, oh. uh, everything was uh, pencil drawn and it was such a beautiful sight to see that uh, particular sketch wow is this uh what was the name of the theater you remember is uh, Gaiti Theater. Gaiti, yes. Yeah, I remember yes. going there. Yeah, very yeah. cute. No, it almost yeah. looks like a movie screen, a movie yes. set, like a set from the movie. Yeah, in the movie. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I remember that. Very pretty. So good. So that must have been very inspiring. To that even pencil sketches yeah. when they put up, they look amazing. I was just trying to see how much patience that person would have put in and, you know, how much he would have uh, studied in terms of, you know, the different shades he have to give with pencil so that actually it feels like, you know, such a beautiful artwork. Do you know who the artist was? Yes, I think uh, some uh, Bhogal, but I, I, I have a picture. I will just check. His name. Was it an English person? No, no, it was not an English person. It was a local person. Oh, very interesting. Because uh, the English who came, they, I think they, some of them were even commissioned to make art. Um, yeah. For the, for the British. And uh, then there were some who were hobby artists who, like other immigrants, no? they had, a lot of time on their hands because they did not have cable or Netflix and no friends. <laughs> so a lot of them did a lot of a lovely art, lots of watercolor also from that time. Yeah, it was like a cute, cute name, Chinu Bhogal. 
he's a local local artist and he has uh, created all i sent the picture on the group mm -hmm. also okay okay yeah. great she no bogal so cute Okay, so another thing that will happen by now, and tell me if it is happening to any of you, um, you might be, a, your hand might be a little tired, your, and your eye might be a little tired, and you're probably making errors that uh, you shouldn't normally be making. Is that happening to anyone? Because we are almost an hour into class. Yeah, it's happening for me. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what is probably setting in is a certain fatigue. So I'm going to suggest just go for a walk somewhere away from your artwork. Don't look at the artwork. Don't look at the reference image. Just go through the house. Take five whole minutes to refresh your what you are seeing. Because uh, the brain gets a little saturated with this information. And uh, after some time, it it starts bombarding repeated information, and uh, you can you can get a little lost in that. Plus, I probably go sit in the sun for some time. So yeah, sorry, I'll probably sit in the sun for some time. You know, get some vitamin D and then come back. Yeah, yeah, that that'll be very good.
in many cases uh, you may feel that whatever you're drawing makes no sense huh? it doesn't look like the object that happens to everything when it is half done so don't abandon it without completing it I mean, even after completing it, don't abandon it. Only after completing it, if there are any problems, you will um, you will be able to evaluate. That's what I'm saying. Anisha, you're back already. Five minutes are done. Yeah, mom, I got tired of staring at the sun. Don't stare at the sun. No, you have to just go close your eyes in front of the sun. I hope you didn't go and look into the sun. No, ma'am, I wouldn't do that. Thank you. Okay. So tell me something. After your back, is it any different? Are you seeing anything different? Yeah, ma'am, I feel more relaxed now. Okay. So sometimes what happens is that you go go out for a walk and you come back uh, it's like your brain is washed off the information because it has to be ready to see something else so it's ready to the environment changes and then you will look at people or you look at stuff outside your window and that refreshes your eyes and literally almost refreshes your brain and the more time you spend away from your artwork the more it has to delete the information that it has you has been focusing on when you're making the illustration so all the data that you have collected the first time round goes and it's a great thing because when you come back to your illustration and you look at your picture again, this time round, the brain gathers fresh data. And that's when you suddenly start seeing new details, which you might have missed the previous time. Also, you can evaluate your own artwork much more objectively because in your brain, you've lost that the attachment of every line and where were you and how did you make it? You've lost the attachment. So you can look at it and say, oh, wait a minute, this line could have been a lot straighter. This is a bit bigger. This is smaller. That kind of objectivity suddenly comes in because you've seen the picture half done. Um, has this happened to you when, uh, and I remember this clearly somebody told me, it's always easier to improve on something that has already been made. Like, we go and watch movies in the theater and then you say, hey, what is this? Yeah, what, what scene has he taken? Or what, uh, they could have made the story like that. I do that constantly. I think I can make a better picture than most directors after they made the picture. So that's not fair. The when When somebody is creating something, they have no idea how the final outcome is going to be. So they are doing the bulk of the work. And what we are doing sitting in the audience, or at least me, is I'm just tweaking the few things that are bound to, to not work 100%, right? So this we can do with our art. We can do our own tweaking. So after you're done, when you realize that there is some certain fatigue, or even if you don't, just go out in the middle of your artwork for five minutes, refresh your eyes, let the brain delete all the previous information, and test this out. Come back and see your art. This is valid only for fine art illustration, whether it is pencil sketching and specifically for pencil sketching or even sometimes for watercolor. But when you are making an illustration from life, from a life object, or you are making something even from a reference, but it is very realistic. So the details matter. Every little proportion matters. In those cases, this refreshing your brain thing really works and then you start you start noticing that you start noticing fatigue you start noticing that okay I'm, I'm too saturated in the brain and that helps you not get frustrated 
because if you persist in that condition you are going to make flawed lines flawed decisions about where to shade dark where to shade light and that is where your bell curve starts moving downward and your illustration starts becoming so bad that the end of it you just want to tear it up and throw it out of frustration and the only thing you needed to do was walk away just cool down walk away everything vanishes So professional um, artists have a lot of tools at their disposal when they do fine art pencil sketches, okay? Um, they will have, uh, I think I've shown this to you before, but I'm just going to get my stash of sophisticated art material that I choose not to use. Okay, so there are a whole range of pencils and uh, colors that, not colors, uh, tools that you can use for pencil sketching. And because it's the easiest thing to do, I've also bought a lot of them. So we have these aquarel graphite pencils. Then these... Uh, 
paper stumps. stumps. Yeah. And then what else do I have? I have skin color, colored pencils. And then I have something for liquid graphite also. So this is this works almost like watercolor. There are large areas that have to be sketched. Instead of using a pencil, you can just create a wash and work almost like uh, watercolor. So, yeah, this is all very easy. But I didn't know of all these tools. And of course, there are many more. There's charcoal, there's... Uh, what is it? That's in charcoal also somewhere. Else. So the point is that these tools are good for uh, an advanced level of artist where you you're sure about what what you are doing. And unfortunately, it takes a while to learn to be sure of your lines. So till then, if you use thing, especially things like erasers, they are definitely not going to help you. It's it's like giving what people have been doing now, giving a sophisticated smartphone to a baby. Of course, it can press all the buttons and accidentally also um, buy an app or do whatever, play games on it, but it is not really advisable. So you, you may get away with a lot of very beautiful art, but remain perpetually at a mediocre level of art uh, skill. So it's like adversity makes, uh, makes you much more, uh, uh, or makes you excel much more than um, having all the tools available, at least as a beginner. So here the adversity is no use of eraser and no use of that blending stump. We can, with a blending stump, this can be done very easily. And uh, I'm sure you all will figure it out. It's really a no-brainer. But to be able to shade and create these variations without a blending stump should be uh, should be practiced more. And I only realized this afterwards after I bought all this uh, equipment. So when I practiced my pencil shading, I was in the eleventh. I was sixteen years old. And uh, quite by accident, because I had nothing better to do that summer, I was sketching and I did not have any tools other than regular paper, cello maybe drawing paper. But in many cases, some of those illustrations, I've, I recently just found them also, are on only uh, printer paper, sometimes even the backs of certain uh, reports or annual reports, something like that. They, they aren't even drawing paper. So it doesn't matter. The more modest the tool, the harder you have to work. And that hard work always pays off. So after that little bit of three months of intense sketching activity, I was able to sketch better than anyone I knew before or since. Even today I can uh, easily compete with any artist, literally. I, I see people on Instagram and I feel, yeah, I can do that, I can do that. Might sound a little smug, but the only reason I can say that is because I can make a predictable line. That's all you need. So three months of this, I can pretty much guarantee you can you can sketch anything you want. And of course, then you have to keep practicing because it's not going to last forever those three months.
Aditi, can you see that? Yeah, let me see. Okay. Okay. Uh, very nice. Very nice. Looking good. Alka, tell me something. Uh, the shadow uh, underneath the bottle, can it become a can it go into any one direction? Because right now the shadow is right from the top. Do you have yeah. a right from the top for this bottle? Yeah, or? kind of, because I kept the prop the bottle right on top of actually on top of my laptop. No, on top of your laptop is fine. On your laptop, do uh, you see the reflection or you do you see the shadow? Because I can no, I can see a very small shadow. Okay, because I can see. Uh, but I can't see the because it's uh, not very sunny outside. Okay. So there is no sharp shadow falling. You know what? But e even then, so that elongated soft... shadow that would come. Huh. It should the be elongated okay. shadow of the bottle is not appearing. Ah, huh, that that is not there at all. There can is just the just... shadow beneath. Yeah. Can you keep a paper? Put a paper underneath it. So you will get huh. some kind of a okay, yeah. foggy shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I got right that. now the way you made the shadow, it looks like the bottle is floating a little bit. Ah, okay. Yeah, I get what you mean. Huh. Okay, so I was talking about artificial adversity. I'm sure somebody must have written a very nice paper in psychology about this. So if you can increase your own uh, hardships, you can really learn a lot from that. So use a regular pencil, not a fancy pencil, no, no expensive equipment no expensive uh, techniques or oh, sorry no exclusive techniques for pencil shading do it with as uh, little special stuff as possible and then see how far you can go it it might seem a little frustrating it's uh, maybe also like the tortoise and the hare story but the rewards are immeasurable Uh, yeah. You just check. Yeah. Second, I'll pin your picture. Okay. Very nice. Can I see the object that you have made? Is that a lid? Uh, it's like a keychain. Ah, very nice. Very good. Good job. Can I see your picture again? Yeah. Nice. Good shadow. Very good. Super. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. That looks so good. It looks so realistic. <laughs> Very nicely done. Okay. So now for this week's homework again, um, did I tell you to do this last week? Make sketches of the stuff that you're owning and using, that you own and yeah. use. Okay. So we are going to continue with that. And this week, if you want to, you can shift to objects which are more metallic. Um, you can maybe try even other materials and try both kinds of shading. So something as refined as this or something as sketchy as this will also do. So look for more objects that you can sketch and make maybe one object a day. And then below that, you can write the date that you've made it. 
Now, for uh, especially for the young people, and the older people can also do this if you want to, convert this into a project. Make it uh, like a little booklet that you can eventually bind. We can look for a nice Japanese binding technique also, where when you flip through, the book becomes interesting. So here the topic is pencil sketches of the stuff that you own. But I want to see if you can make it into something more interesting. It has to be quirky. It has to be um, make it more fun, maybe. You can also experiment with different ways that the book can fold. Uh, sometimes you can have an accordion fold in one direction. Sometimes it can fold another way. Um, I think I must have shown you my Hoa diary. So eventually we can make it like that. But every, every uh, picture that you make, you can make it on different papers, different sized papers, different textured paper also. It does not always have to be on white paper. But it has to be in pencil. So a few tricks that I had tried over here where the illustration was inside and this was made on an envelope. So I could put stuff inside the envelope. The envelope is folded onto this paper. So this is very dimensional, this artwork, right? Oh, one second. Oops. Something like that. This is just a card. Stuff that is pasted in. This is how the final book can be. Right? But you can think of different ways. You could probably make something that opens out up like that. Or this, if you're making something that's long, can extend outward. Or say, for example, you're making a bag, an illustration of a bag. So the bag can be made over here, but a strap can be attached to it. So it can be part 3D, part 2D, things like that. Think very innovative. Don't think, uh, if you've seen something in a book before, don't do that. Do something else. Here I've attached a brochure which opens up. And of course, because of the limitation of the picture, it opens up upside down. But over here, I wanted it right side up. This opens into the book also. So there's lots of things that you can do. Only with stuff that you own and use. All right. So Saturday people, now the uh, Tuesday evening batch has also joined you. So you all will also get some challenging projects like that. All these kids are probably going to apply to some art college, I'm hoping. Uh, if not art, then maybe design. Chalo, okay. I like design as well. But if not, even if you're doing it as a hobby, you can make your hobby very exciting. You don't have to just say, oh, it's just a hobby. Like typical Indian people do. Why, why are you spending so much time on this? It's not a hobby. Hai. You should be working. You should be studying. Do something that is going to be more productive. You can do this also very productively. Okay. Whenever okay. I'm bored in the middle of my classes, I, I just sit and I draw, like while the teacher will be teaching something or the other, and then I'm just like so tired. You know? I got <laughs> this so really boring. nice just... forward yesterday of a dancing skeleton where the student has drawn the skeleton, uh, a person who really loved dance, and then he has labeled all the portions. I mean, it was for a science project, but he's drawn this dancing skeleton, he or she, and labeled all the parts of the skeleton. And there in red ink, you can see the teacher's remarks. Draw again. And I'm like, who is this idiot teacher? Oh. This is such a beautiful skeleton. I'll put it on the group. It's such a lovely skeleton. And completely accurate. Scientifically, absolutely accurate. 
except that is not standing to attention but it's dancing so stupid please and send I'll, me like I, yeah, yeah i'll send it on the i phone. want to gather the comments of uh, teachers who should not be teachers they should be thrown <laughs> out Ma'am, uh, I want to show a sketch I done few days ago. Okay, let's see. This container one. Uh -huh. This was actually a container of erasers. It was a container of erasers. Yes, I okay. have a plastic kind of tiny container which uh -huh. I keep all of my erasers. So what happened? I was looking for an item which I can sketch an object. So I was like, why don't I use this one? Since I will be not using it, so I was like, I will use this one. So this was a sketch. Uh-huh. Very nice. This. Very nice. Good. I like the other sketches also. Well done. Mom, I drew a family portrait. Oh, that's so cute. That's lovely. How nice. Wait, let's see. Who the one in the middle mom? is my dog. This is uh -huh. my brother. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is adorable. My mom and so my dad. Yeah. Please share this on the so we can see it in detail. This is beautiful. This is almost like those uh, the thornberries. Have you seen the thornberries? It's a lovely uh, animation. What's it called? The wild thornberries. Wild thornberries. Okay. You love it. Right? I love the thing she's done at the bottom also. Anisha, what is what are those two characters at the bottom of the page? Those are really interesting. Oh, like this is my brother. Okay, so like this is like a how do I say? It? This is like a drastic view of him <laughs> like he always likes to complain <laughs> oh <laughs> he's always opening his mouth and complaining you know and then like this is uh, like he wears crocs and then he plays basketball too so this is his basketball thing and then this is me so like i'm just like you know i'm like out of the box creative like in my own world just a happy kid because that's supposed to be me and this is supposed to be my dog. My oh, dog, that's lovely. Like, you know, barks a lot. So, like, I think it's a masterpiece. It's beautiful. Yeah, it looks it's beautiful. Put a date on the back of this picture. Don't put it in the front. Put it in the back. Okay, yeah. Because you will look yeah, back. Please share your pictures because it's really creative. It's so lovely cute. to see this. Very nice, yeah. I think Ritika was showing something. Yeah. No, lovely show. Anisha, very nice. Oh yeah, I I remember Para, you know, seeing. This. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Ritika's is also very beautiful. Yeah, I try to sketch the. Lovely, very nice. Are I'm so impressed. Yeah, very good. All the shapes and all are coming out so good now. I'm thrilled. Let's see, Swara. Very nice. Beautiful. Very nice. Good. So, next week, now we can dive into portraits. So, people, please don't bunk. Don't run away. We will be doing portraits. Um, but I will be sharing a picture, some pictures with you beforehand. If possible, please make a print of those pictures because um, we need to make one illustration a certain way where I, I, you need to look at it in a, uh, it should be on paper. It helps rather than on your phone or something. And some people who don't have two devices, I don't want them to not uh, have that reference image. Okay. So, yes, I guess that's it for today. Uh, if you feel like it, please sketch the rest of the images that I've shared with you. Now that you have made these realistic images in a pencil, those kettles and all will be very easy. Kettles, those urns, all of that. And on Pinterest, I have a board called Pencil Paradise which if you want to follow has got a lot of reference images and a lot of sketches that I have pinned of other artists all in pencil. So you can grab some from there also. And then of course you can start your own uh, chain of pins or your own board. So it's called Pencil Paradise. Okay, all right. Okay, so then I will catch you next week. Bye.
Saturday, right? Thanks, everything. Saturday, bye. Saturday, yes. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.